Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, a new weekly feature on NBC's all-star festival of mystery, comedy, music, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music and first in television. By Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And by Anison, for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Now here's Perry Como for RCA Victor. Surprising, surprising That you should come along That you should come along That summer day just when you did Surprising, surprising That you should smile at me And I should smile at you That summer day just as we did For a repeat performance from Perry Como, you can hear Surprising again and again on RCA Victor Records. It's available now at record dealers everywhere, this romantic ballad that's skyrocketing to the top in RCA Victor's summer parade of hits. And coupled with Surprising is another terrific new pop number, Cara Cara Bella Bella. One side Surprising, the flip side, Cara Cara Bella Bella, sung by America's leading baritone Perry Como, on RCA Victor Records. Now, Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight, the famous old investigator's case is entitled The Case of the Strange Murder of Carrie Ellis. Our scene is a fashionable home in the suburbs of New York. A young woman of great poise and beauty is about to answer the insistent ring of her doorbell, unaware that her unexpected visitor is accompanied by death. Yes? Are you Mrs. Carrie Ellis? Yes, I am. Well? I... I wanted to see you about something... Well, who are you? Who am I? What on earth's the matter with you? Are you ill? I hate you. What? I said, I hate you. Are you out of your mind? I never saw you before. Please leave my house. Do you hear what I said? Please. Going out to lunch, Mike? Oh, I thought I'd grab myself a sandwich, Mr. Keene. I would... Oh, someone's at the door, boss. I'll see who it is. Yes, lady? Are you Mr. Keene? No, I'm his partner, Mike Clancy. Here's Mr. Keene. Well, what can I do for you? Help me, Mr. Keene. I didn't mean to do it. I, I don't even remember doing it. Please, you, you've got to save me. Save you? From what? I've just shot a woman to death. Saints preserve us. And come inside. Boss, she looks like she's a bit out of her mind. Who are you? My name is Helen Taylor. And you just killed someone? Yes. With this gun. I'd take charge of that if you don't mind. Two bullets are missing from this gun. Yes. Mrs. Ellis was shot twice. Mrs. Ellis? Is she the woman you killed? Yes. Where did this happen? In her home. Oh, Mr. Keene, I I just can't understand it. I've never even seen Mrs. Ellis before in my life. What possessed me to take a gun and go to her home to murder her? I'd like to help you if I can. Now, why not tell me the entire story, Miss Taylor? Mrs. Taylor, I'm married, Mr. Keene. And that's another thing that horrifies me. This will ruin my husband's life. Mike. Yes, boss. And get a hold of the car, will you? I think we ought to go to the scene of the crime immediately. Okay, sir. Uh, We'll meet you downstairs in five minutes. Right, Mr. Keene. Mrs. Taylor, tell me exactly what happened from the beginning. Oh, Mr. Keene, I... I only know that I found myself 
with that gun in my hand in Mrs. Ellis' apartment. She was lying on the floor, dead. And you don't know who she is? Well, her name is familiar, but that's all. I'm sure I've never seen her before. Have you been ill, Mrs. Taylor? I mean, have you ever suffered from amnesia, a loss of memory? No. Where can I reach your husband? Oh, in his shop. Peter has a small business, costume jewelry. And his phone number? Central 71331. Mr. Keene, you're going to tell him about me? I'm going to ask him to meet us at the home of Mrs. Ellis. Taylor and Company. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Now, this is Mr. Keene speaking. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator. Your wife is in my office at the moment. Helen, why? What's happened? Uh, Mr. Taylor, do you know a Mrs. Ellis? Mrs. Carrie Ellis? Why, why yes, she's a customer of mine, a wealthy widow. And then you know where she lives? 1114 Highland Boulevard. Can you meet me there within half an hour? Why, what's up, Mr. Keene? I'd rather not discuss it on the phone. Now, just tell me one thing. Has your wife been ill recently? No. No attacks of amnesia? Why, no. Mr. Keene, you're beginning to frighten me. Mr. Taylor... Your wife seems to feel that she was responsible for someone's death. What's that? Well, that's all I can say right now. Meet me at Mrs. Ellis' house in half an hour. Yes, yes, I'll be there, Mr. Keene. And thanks for calling. Goodbye. Are you ready to leave, Mrs. Taylor? Mr. Keene, I appreciate what you're doing for me. I've read about you and heard how kind you've been to those who need your help. That's why I... I came to you almost instinctively. You don't appear to be the type of a woman who would settle things with a revolver, Mrs. Taylor. Let me warn you, however, that if this is some kind of a ruse, I'll see that you pay for it. Every word I've told you is the truth, Mr. Keene. I swear it. Very well, Mrs. Taylor. Let's leave and check this thing completely at the scene of the crime. Well, looks like the police are here already, boss. Yes, Mike, I noticed the squad cars parked across the street. Well? Is this Mrs. Carrie Ellis' home? Yes. Who is it, Miss Hooper? Well, boss, that's Lieutenant Hale of the Homicide Squad. Uh, Lieutenant, it's Mr. Keene and Mike Clancy. Oh, hello, Mr. Keene. Come right in. How are you, Mike? Okay, Lieutenant. How did you know about this murder, Mr. Keene? Uh, this woman, uh, Mrs. Taylor, came to my office. Taylor, huh? Is this your scarf, Mrs. Taylor? It's initialed H.T. Yes, it's mine. Where did you find it, Lieutenant? Near the body, Mr. Keene. Mrs. Taylor, just what do you know about the death of Mrs. Carrie Ellis? Mrs. Taylor told me that she was the one who killed her, Lieutenant. Well, that makes things simple. Ryan. Yeah, Lieutenant. Take Mrs. Taylor down to headquarters. Mr. Keene. Go with the police officer, Mrs. Taylor. It's best that way. But you can depend on me to do everything I can to help you. I, I will, Mr. Keene. Let's go. Is Mrs. Ellis's body still here, Lieutenant Hale? No, Mr. Keene. We removed it to the morgue. This young lady found it about an hour ago. She's the victim's niece, Miss Betty Hooper. Mrs. Taylor deserves the electric chair. She killed my aunt in cold blood. Uh, Lieutenant, may I see you alone for a few moments? Of course. Excuse us, Miss Hooper... Very well. Uh, Do you mind if I have a look around inside myself, Lieutenant? Go ahead, Mike. That you're wasting your time. The crime is solved. I don't think it is, Lieutenant. But Mrs. Taylor admitted she killed Mrs. Ellis. She only admitted to me that she discovered herself here with a gun in her hands and Mrs. Ellis on the floor. But she doesn't remember coming here or killing the woman. Amnesia has been tried as an alibi before, Mr. Keene. It's an old trick. I don't think this is a trick, Lieutenant. And it doesn't seem to be amnesia. In a true case of amnesia, the past is a complete blank in the person's mind. But Mrs. Taylor remembers a great many personal details about herself. And she claims she never saw Mrs. Ellis before in all her life. Well, Mr. Keene, maybe she's insane. I doubt it. However, any psychiatrist can testify to that. In my opinion, Mrs. Taylor may be the victim of a diabolical plot. 
You mean you don't think she actually killed Mrs. Ellis? No, Lieutenant Hale. And perhaps I'll be able to prove it to you very soon. And, Mrs. Hooper, you say you've never seen Mrs. Taylor before. No, Mr. Keene. But this questioning seems ridiculous. The woman confessed that she killed my aunt, didn't she? I have reason to believe that Mrs. Taylor didn't murder your aunt. You're about the only one who thinks so. When Lieutenant Hale of the police left, he took her along to prison, didn't he? Tell me, Miss Hooper, are you Mrs. Ellis's closest relative? Why, yes. I had no one except Aunt Carrie, Mrs. Ellis. I understand she was a wealthy woman. When her husband was killed in an accident, he left her almost a million dollars. And as her closest relative, you inherit that. Of course I... What are you getting at, Mr. Keene? Nothing at the moment. Boss, that must be Mrs. Taylor's husband. Uh, let Mike Clancy answer the door, Miss Hooper. There are one or two things I still want to question you about. I'll get it, boss. Mr. Keene, there's nothing I can tell you. Have you been living here with your aunt, Miss Hooper? Not for several months. Then you lived with her before? Yes, after my father died. Why aren't you still living with her? Because Aunt Carrie tried to boss me around and I didn't like it. I'm old enough to do as I please. Well, that's funny, Mr. Keene, sir. What's the matter, Mike? Well, when I opened the front door, there was no one there. There wasn't? Mr. Keene, look. What is it, Miss Hooper? There's a face staring in at us through the window. She's right, Mike. I'll find out what this business is in a hurry. Stop. Stop where you are, mister, or I'll shoot. Get him inside, Mike. Inside, mister. And since you're so fond of windows, you can get in through this one. And no tricks. Now, step over here. And who are you? My name is Smith. John Smith. Oh, and so is mine. We must be the fellows who invented the cough drops. And search him, Mike. Take your hands oh, off stay me. Stay quiet, young fella. Here. Here's his wallet, Mr. King, sir. There's an identification inside. The name is Vernon Phillips. And what were you doing outside that window, Mr. Phillips? None of your business. And none of your lip, either. He must have heard our voices as he rang the doorbell a few moments ago, Mike. Then he ran around to the back of the house to check on who was inside. Well, sure, and he's got reason to hide, boss. Look what this bucko's been carrying around. It's a gun, Mr. Keene. Are there any bullets missing from the gun, Mike? Yes, boss. Two bullets have been fired. Well, it appears as though this case has taken another mysterious turn. I think we'll have a little talk with Mr. Phillips. It should prove to be an interesting one. <laughs> Mr. Keene will return in just a moment. But first... Hi, folks. This is Bing Crosby. This being summer, I just want to remind you when you go on a vacation, take along a carton or two of those mild Chesterfields. Yes, sir, vacation time's the time to relax and enjoy life, to do just what you want to do. And what better time can you think of to start smoking Chesterfield, a cigarette that gives you everything you want for real smoking pleasure? Remember, Chesterfields are milder, always milder, better tasting, and cooler smoking. Chesterfield gives you all that, plus the added pleasure of no unpleasant aftertaste. Believe me, that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. So I'll tell you what you do. Whether you're just getting away for a few days or you plan to get off on a long vacation, you be sure you pack along plenty of Chesterfields. And take it from me, Chesterfield's the best cigarette for you to smoke. Now back to Mr. Keene and the case of the strange murder of Carrie Ellis. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the strange murder of Carrie Ellis, a wealthy and beautiful young widow. A woman named Helen Taylor has confessed to the murder, but the strange circumstances lead Mr. Keene to believe she's been made the victim of a diabolical plot. Now a new suspect, a man named Vernon Phillips, who was prowling outside the Ellis home, has been caught by Mike. Mr. Keene is trying to find out why a gun with two missing bullets was found in his pocket. Mike is saying... All right, mister. I think it's time you did a little talking. Perhaps when Mr. Phillips realizes what a difficult position he's in, Mike, he'll be more cooperative. I have a license to carry that gun, if that's what you mean, Mr. Keene. Did you also have a license to use it on Mrs. Carrie Ellis? Carrie? What's happened to her? 
she was murdered, Mr. Phillips. Carrie. Murdered? Now will you tell us why you came here with a gun and acted so suspiciously? No. You're trying to pin the murder on me. I won't answer your questions. That must be Mrs. Taylor's husband now, boss. No, please bring him in here, Mike. Okay, sir. When... When did the murder happen, Mr. Keene? Carrie Ellis was shot to death several hours ago, here in her home. Boss, here's Peter Taylor. Where is my wife, Mr. Keene? I... Why, it's Vernon. Mr. Taylor, you seem to recognize Vernon Phillips. Yes, I recognize him. I've seen him with Mrs. Ellis. That's a lie. You're the man she quarreled with one afternoon while I was here. I was delivering some jewelry she'd ordered at my shop. Mrs. Ellis has been murdered, Mr. Taylor. Murdered? Well, then, Mr. Keene, that's what you meant when you said on the phone that Helen, my wife, was responsible for someone's death. I didn't say she was responsible. I said she thought she was. Where is my wife, Mr. Keene? I've got to see her. She's been taken to the city prison, Mr. Taylor. All right, I'm going there now. Uh, just a moment, please. There are one or two things I must ask you. Did your wife know Carrie Ellis? Did they ever meet? No, no, they never met, as far as I remember. Would she have any reason to murder Mrs. Ellis? Mr. Keene, must I answer that question? I, I ought to consult a lawyer first, for my wife's sake. I'm trying to help her as much as you are, Mr. Taylor. Very well. I'll promise to tell you everything I know, if you'll allow me one privilege first. What is it? Let me talk to Helen. After you talk to her, where can I meet you? At my home. Here. Here's my card. And just one thing before you go. Are you certain you can identify this man, Vernon Phillips, and testify that you heard him quarrel with the murdered woman, Mrs. Ellis? I can't prove it, of course, Mr. Keene. There were no other witnesses. But I was in another room with my sample jewelry case when I heard him force his way inside. Very well. You may leave, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Keene. I'm going to the city prison immediately. Well, Mr. Phillips, do you still insist on keeping silent after what Mr. Taylor just told us? Yes, but that doesn't mean that I will, Mr. Keene. Do you know anything about this man, Miss Hooper? I've never seen him. But my Aunt Carrie had talked about him without mentioning his name. What did she say? She seemed to be afraid of someone. A man, she said, had fallen violently in love with her. Many men have done that because Aunt Carrie was very beautiful. That's why I didn't give it much thought. Even when Aunt Carrie mentioned his eyes. His eyes? She said they were strange eyes. And they frightened her. Mr. Phillips here has eyes like that. Well, that's ridiculous. I'd never have harmed Carrie Ellis. I loved her too. That's an admission you won't be able to retract, Phillips. You're not going to get another word out of me, Mr. Keene. Suit yourself. Put the handcuffs on him, Mike. What? Phillips, I'm turning you over to the police on suspicion of murder. <laughs> Mrs. Taylor is in cell number four. On your right, Mr. Keene. Thank you, Lieutenant Hale. Well, she'll be happy to hear that she's got a chance to go free now, boss. Yes, Mike. But we still don't know if Vernon Phillips can really be held as a suspect. Oh, but the gun he had, with two bullets fired. Ah, here's Mrs. Taylor's cell. Good evening, Mrs. Taylor. What? Boss, she looks at us like she don't recognize us. You remember me, don't you, Mrs. Taylor? Do I? Oh. Oh, yes. Mr. Keene and, and, and Mr. Clancy. I have news for you. A man named Vernon Phillips has just been arrested on suspicion of murdering Mrs. Ellis. Vernon Phillips? Have you ever heard of him? No. But they should set him free. I murdered Mrs. Ellis. But you aren't sure you pulled the trigger. I am sure now. Mr. Keene, she's practically making a full confession. Uh, Mrs. Taylor, just tell me this. Do you know why you killed Carrie Ellis? Yes. She didn't know why before, boss. And what was the reason, Mrs. Taylor? Jealousy. My husband was seeing her on business, and I imagined there was something going on between them. I killed Carrie Ellis because of jealousy. And... I'd do it again if I had the chance. I see. Now, 
Please leave me alone, Mr. Keene. Come along, Mike. Well, looks as though we've just been wasting our time, boss. She was guilty all along. No, Mike. Everything is clear to me now. Completely clear. I think I know where to find the real murderer of Carrie Ellis. But getting a confession may be another story. However, I'm going to take a chance. If it works, we'll learn the solution to one of the most astounding mysteries we've ever had to solve. <laughs> Mr. Keene, come in, sir. I hope I haven't kept you waiting long, Mr. Taylor. No, that's quite all right. You've seen your wife in the city prison? Yes. And now I'm prepared to tell you everything. Go on, Mr. Taylor. My wife did murder Carrie Ellis. But you must be lenient with her, Mr. Keene. She lost her head. Now, why did she commit the murder? She was insanely jealous of Mrs. Ellis. Somehow she learned that I was going to Mrs. Ellis's house... Actually, I was merely showing costume jewelry samples. Oh, isn't that unusual? Don't your customers make their purchases in your shop? Uh, yes, but uh, Mrs. Ellis was very wealthy, so I'd bring my sample case to her home. But your wife got the wrong impression about your visit to Mrs. Ellis. Is that it? Exactly, Mr. Keene. That's the entire story. And every word of it is a lie. What? I have reason to believe, Mr. Taylor, that you murdered Carrie Ellis. You're not serious. You're under arrest, Taylor. Put your hands up. That gun isn't necessary. No? Mr. Keene, you're making a big mistake. I don't think I am. Look at me, Mr. Keene. Don't you see that I'm innocent? Can't you see it in my eyes? I... I think you'd better come with me, Mr. Taylor. Look in my eyes again, Mr. Keene. Deep inside. Do you see a murderer's heart? Of course you don't. Mr. Keene? Yes? Hand your gun to me. I'm commanding you to give me your gun now. Very well. Here's my gun. Thank you. <laughs> the great Mr. Keene. The amazing investigator. As easy to hypnotize as a child. Do you hear what I'm saying, Mr. Keene? Yes. I hear. This situation is really amusing. Here you are, knowing I killed Carrie Ellis. But you're hypnotized and you can't do anything about it. Sit down. In that chair. Yes. My wife was easy to hypnotize, too. Very easy. I've had her under a semi-hypnotic spell ever since I married her. She does exactly as I command. Mr. Taylor, I, I must... Just be quiet, Mr. Keene. Would you like to know why I killed Carrie Ellis? She found out that I was married. And she was going to tell my wife that I tried to make love to her. She tried to... And then she was going to turn me over to the police for threatening her for money. The fool. Why else did she think I wanted to marry her? Why are you telling me this, Taylor? Because you're now under my hypnotic control and you're helpless. I'll admit I didn't expect my wife Helen to go to you for help. But this time there'll be no mistakes. You're finished, Keene, as of now. I'm taking care of you with your own gun. I... Why, this gun... It's not loaded. I have another gun here, Taylor, that is loaded. What? Put up your hand. Open up in there. Just a moment, Mike. Stay where you are, Taylor, and keep your hands up. Are you okay, boss? Yes, I'm fine, Mike. Here, take this gun and keep it trained on Taylor. He's one of the most dangerous killers I've ever encountered. Keen, you... you weren't under my hypnotic control. You were acting. I happen to know something about hypnotism myself, Taylor. And I wanted to get admission of guilt out of you. You worked on your wife with hypnotic suggestion. You made her believe she hated Carrie Ellis. And you commanded her to go to the Ellis home. Saints preserve us. He's another Stengali. That's right, Mike. But an unsuccessful one. He followed his wife to Mrs. Ellis' apartment. Then he shot Mrs. Ellis and placed the gun in the hand of his hypnotized wife. 
telling her to make a full confession of guilt. He left her scarf, too, as additional evidence. You fool me, Keene. You walked in here without a shred of evidence and tricked a confession out of me. Carrie Ellis's niece mentioned a man with eyes like yours, Taylor, and her description made me think of hypnotism. And then I knew the answer to your wife's peculiar behavior. Well, boss, I just came from police headquarters, and that fellow Phillips did a little more talking. I thought he would, Mike. The two missing bullets from his gun were fired when he was practicing on a target. He said he came to Mrs. Ellis's house to protect her. Mrs. Ellis must have said something to him about Taylor, uh, without mentioning Taylor's name. <laughs> Carrie threw Phillips over because I made her do it. I told her I'd kill any man who came between us if I couldn't have her. Were you going to add bigamy to your list of crimes, Taylor? Oh, Helen would have given me my divorce, Keen. Undoubtedly. Under your hypnotic spell. Your fiendish plot had a great many facets to it, Taylor. But it also had some flaws. I'm arresting you for the murder of Carrie Ellis, and I doubt very much if you'll be able to hypnotize the district attorney when he has you tried and convicted. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the case of the strange murder of Carrie Ellis. If you suffer from pains of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia, you should discover what many thousands have known for years, that Anison brings incredibly fast, effective relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Probably at some time you've received an envelope containing Anison tablets from your physician or dentist. Thousands of people have been introduced to Anison this way. Try Anison yourself the next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted at how quickly relief can come. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100 for your medicine cabinet. Ask for Anison today. Listen again next week to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, a new weekly feature on NBC's All-Star Festival of mystery, comedy, music, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television. By Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And by Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Richard Leonard is the director. Philip Clark plays Mr. Keene. Your announcer, Jack Costello. Remember, Mr. Keene is now on the air at this new time, every Friday at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Friday, when the kindly old tracer turns to the abandoned well murder case. Next, it's music with Roy Shield on NBC. Mm -hmm.